Now, the third category of risk, which we had enlisted earlier, was the economic risk. Now, economic risk, by definition, is uh, is that that the company's cash flows may get, may get impacted by certain exchange rate movements in the near future. To understand this definition better, let's look at a simple example. Now, let's say a, there is a car manufacturer in Italy, which is selling cars in the UK. So, let's say a Ferrari, just taking an example. Now, we'll assume that the car manufacturer is charging a price in euros. Now, as a result, it is not going to face any transaction risk, isn't it? Because the reporting numbers are also in euros. Since the company is based in Italy, they need not worry because their uh, reporting currency is in euros. At the same time, all of their receipts are also coming in euros. So that way, transaction risk is not there. So any automobile cars which they sell to the UK, their inflows are coming in, in euros. So that way, although it's a receivable transaction, it's not a problem because the currency denominator is the same. It's euros only. So that's why it will not face any transaction risk. However, the manufacturer will definitely face some bit of economic risk. And this economic risk is something which will emanate from exchange rate movements. So let's try to understand how that will impact the company. Now, think of this economic risk more from a strategic perspective. So the next two points which we'll be discussing will help you relate with the overall strategy for a certain company. Now, let's walk through we'll what, what will happen whenever an economic risk emanates. Now, imagine a scenario where the British pound is depreciating uh, as related to euros. So that way, uh, you can imagine that euro is strengthening. So this means if the British pound weakens, then all of the automobile buyers who are based in Britain will find it expensive to buy cars uh, from that particular company in Italy because the exchange rate has moved against them. So that way, they will find it more expensive to purchase uh, those cars and make the payment in euros. Naturally, this will have an impact on the business uh, business of the firm, which is uh, because th this will result in dropped car sales in the British market. Because so that company, which was doing maybe a lucrative business earlier, might fa face, uh, face difficult times because uh, buyers in UK would simply say that it's just too expensive to uh, buy those cars because I mean, the currency has uh, moved in a certain way, which, are, which has made a uh, uh, which has made it very difficult for us to pay in euros, which is making the proposition very, very expensive. So that way they may simply curtail on their purchases of the car which are made by the Italian manufacturer. Now, this is an economic risk which the Italian firm is facing because honestly, the Italian firm has not done anything wrong. Now, this this risk has emanated because of the exchange, uh, exchange rate movements, something which is beyond that firm's control. But this is a very, very real risk, especially when we are talking for these kind of transactions. Uh, companies are very, very careful and they have, uh, they have, uh, and this is considered more of a strategic decision, something which you'll, uh, which you'll understand through this second portion of this related example. Now, now why we say strategy? Because now we have started talking from the point of view of a competitive position for a company. Now, because that particular manufacturer in Italy is unable to sell that many number of cars in the UK. We know that there is demand in Britain, so people want automobiles. But that particular manufacturer's cars are extremely expensive for them. So they'll say yes, and British buyers say we want to purchase an automobile, but we can't really go via the earlier route. It's very expensive. So that opens up the market for someone else. So let's say there is a certain manufacturer in China. And uh, imagine that the the British pound and Chinese yuan rate is very very favorable. That way, so that way British buyers would find it uh, cheaper to purchase cars from the Chinese manufacturer because of the way in which the GBP CNY exchange rate is looking. So that way, this will open doors for that Chinese manufacturer to set shop or maybe create their own market niche within the within the broad uh, British market. And that is going to give them this, uh, so they basically carve out their own niche and they capture a certain portion of the market. Now, if we look at these two points together, we understand that this is an economic risk which one or which any firm should look at from an overall long-term strategic perspective. Because when we talk from a long-term strategic perspective, it's always a competitive position which one needs to manage. 
Because finally, if we, if a certain company is not able to maintain its competitive edge, then that naturally translates into a lower top line, which will finally impact the bottom line growth for any company. Now, economic risk, yes, everyone knows it exists, but it is a very difficult risk to capture. Now, if you compare that to transaction and translation risk, it's a, it's a difficult risk to understand. Now, although from this simple example, we easily understand it, but the way in which we can quantify that and somehow mitigate that, 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 is, that is kind of challenging, I would say. So it's not a rules-based approach. So unfortunately, there are no set rules which one could follow for mitigation of economic risk. But I would say uh, this is something which will come under strategic business discussions on how exactly a firm wants to look at and manage economic risk. So generally what companies do is uh, they use their finance experts in order to thoroughly do a scenario analysis of the FX rate, FX, uh, FX rate movements, which are plausible in the, in the near future. So these could be highly quantitative models. And uh, these models could, uh, could simulate various scenarios which are plausible in the near future. And that way, the company's management would get a decent idea as to what are the kind of potential FX risks which they could be exposed to and indirectly, what are the potential economic risks which they wish to manage.